All right, at this point, I just want to kind of plow through some of the uh, text changes that I'm going to do, the typography kind of stuff that I want to do to my um, site. So, first order of business that I want to do is kind of um, define something in my CSS that says that this portion is going to be type. Um, and I use, I use CSS comments to do that, and I'm just going to put in there type. And I guess above the container that I set up over here, this is going to be a uh, layout. Now I do this because it allows me uh, later on when I'm actually editing the document again, I could quickly see which portion refers to what in my style sheet. So uh, CSS comments, more of a thing for myself than actual uh, design. Uh, so now let's quickly go through this stuff. So if I want to compare where I'm at to where I'm going, I see that for one, I need to change my overall uh, font family, right? So let me use my web developer to go view style information. And if I click here, maybe I could find, I'm looking on the left here, something that tells me what font I'm using. I think I need to go all the way to my body container. That's where I defined it. I'm going to click until I get it. Let's see. I want this thing to kind of, ah, there we go, to body. Ah, right there. Using that, I kind of see what font family I'm using. So um, that's what I'm going to use within my body. I'll go font family, and I should have a Times New Roman style one. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a Georgia Times New Roman or Georgia. Um, let's see okay that's looking good um, alright so you notice because all of those elements share that uh, attribute I'm not gonna obviously I'm not gonna target each one of these elements individually I'm gonna use CSS inheritance to kind of make sure all of these get that same font what else is common to everything um, spacing I think I'm gonna use my line height is gonna be 1.5 1.4 EM, that's kind of my magic number over there, and give things a little bit of breathing room. So now everything, eh, actually, when I look at it, maybe I'll go 1.6. Let's see, maybe that's, yeah, I like that a little bit better. Just kind of gives everything, like I said, just a little bit more breathing room. I I may want even more for um, for my lines. Well, I don't want the line. I'm looking for my uh, list item elements over here. I don't say I want more line line height between them but I do I am gonna want some spacing between these things between all of them um, yeah but that's gonna be different I need to target both a, an, an ordered list an OL and a list item so what would I do I'm just gonna group those together so I'll go OL then comma UL and and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do in this case I can't use I can't use line height because that's going to affect the distance between these. What I actually want to affect is the difference between each line item. So, uh, duh, what am I doing over here? Uh, I'm working backwards. I mean, I don't want to do OL and UL. I want to do LI. Duh. Okay. And what I could do there is either use padding top or padding bottom to push the things down. I think I'm going to use padding bottom. So, padding bottom and let me give it um, let's start with 10 pixels and see what that looks like okay that looks pretty good I like that eh, well, let me go even further and say 16 pixels alright that's a little more legible between them and actually now that I look at it I wonder if ah, this will be fine I'm, I'm wondering if this is if my 1.6 eh. 1.6 may be just a little too much for what I'm going for. Okay, I think that's a little bit better now. Now it makes things a little more clearer, and that's fine. Um, okay, so far these are all universal changes I'm making over here, so that's why I'm keeping it pretty broad with my selectors. I'm selecting all line items and paragraphs. Um, what I'm thinking I may want to do to my paragraph text is kind of squeeze the text in just a little bit. Maybe, well, you know, to well, let, let's see what it looks like in my finished product. 
uh, you see how this biography kind of has a little bit of, uh, it seems almost indented the whole thing. So I think what I need to do here for this, to, I need to target this paragraph text here and put a little bit of padding left on it. Um, so let me do just that. How would I do that? I already have, ah, I already have the biography over here. Biography P, and let's do padding. I'm going to use the shorthand for this. So shorthand starts if, I, if I'll just do a zero 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 zero, and that's top right, bottom left. So I want zero zero for my for my top is fine but now top right let's give it let me just make sure I'm doing the right thing yeah there we go 20 pixels padding to the right and why don't we do 20 well let's do 15 to the left okay that's looking good let me see what that refreshes oh that's the I'm looking at the finished product as opposed to the work in progress here we go alright I definitely like that I like the way that's turning out ah, something I need to do now that's that's kinda unique to the banner is I need to make the font slightly smaller and I'll make and I need to make that site a different color so why don't I I'm gonna start with doing a font size on my body to a hundred percent so that means that if the user was zoomed at a different thing it's going to just set it back to its default uh, browser um, uh, browser default text size which for the most part is going to be 16 pixels so this is saying hey just reset that text size but now I'm going to kind of keep a relative value over there I'm going to go to my banner see my my banner I think I could just stick it right in this, right over here, the paragraph, because everything I, th I believe lives inside of the uh, the paragraph, even my site in there. So font size, I want to keep it relative, so why don't I do 85%, so that way, ah, look at that, makes it a little bit smaller. Okay, that's that's looking pretty good. I noticed that this font also has some kind of justification on it, and I want to instead of it being right ragged, it's going to be um, just totally justified. So let's see. Uh, let me edit that. Now you got to be careful with this type of justification because it's not good for uh, dyslexic people. Um, where is it? Justify under text align. So, ooh, wait, I don't want it to do it to that. Oh, shoot. Let's go. Okay, so that was the paragraph. I'm just going to cut it out of there. Um, you want to be careful using it because people with dys dyslexia end up seeing what they call, uh, I guess, rivers of white, where their eyes focus more on the spaces between words than actual than the actual words. And also, when you have long paragraphs like this, and you go from left to right, and you got to go back to the starting of the new line left, it could be difficult to find your place. Now, this is a pretty short paragraph, so it's cool. Uh, I'm comfortable using it here, but I wouldn't want to use it on a lot of my text. Uh, and finally, I want to target the site in here and make it a lighter color gray because that seems to be what we're working with over here. And how would I do that? Well, with Dreamweaver, well, first, before I even do all that, if I refer to my code, I know that this portion over here that I'm referring to is this site tag, right? So I know at the very least I need to target that now site lives inside of this paragraph tag so I could target just the site inside of a paragraph tag which is good but if I wanted to get even more specific I could do inside of the block quote inside of the banner and that's likely what Dreamweaver's code will do for me um, if I do that and click the new rule it gets pretty specific with what it wants to do um, I think we could go as as less specific and as lean as this because if you go even less specific 
block quote, paragraph, and cite, this may happen again if you put another quote into your uh, page. But if you go more specific, it'll never happen again inside of uh, the banner. Or at least it will happen, but it'll be grayed out. So it'll be, it'll be the text will be gray. Sorry. Um, so anyway, I feel comfortable using that short of a selector. And really, what I want to do here is create that gray. And let me see. I refresh it. Um, yeah, this is looking pretty close. Although I'm thinking that this text over here still has a little more line height than I set for mine. Uh, yeah, I guess in my finished copy, I did some word spacing, and that made it a little bit nicer. The spacing between these words to be uh, a quarter of an em and the line height to one six. So I I'm pretty close to where I want to go. Actually, I like that word spacing. It seems to definitely bring up the readability of everything. So um, I think I will apply that. And where did it, where was that applied? Oh, that was just applied globally to any p element. I wonder. If I could just use that globally for even my uh, list items, which I think would be a bit more appropriate. And okay, well, that's what it's starting to look like. Ah, other things that I may need to do is kind of increase my text size, maybe add some padding top to some of my H2 elements to kind of give everything a little more vertical spacing but um, that's how you'd go about it you want a little more spacing at the top give it some padding top or if you want a little more spacing between the header and the actual content give a little pad and botting to the to the H1 or H2 tags and just move along till you get it to exactly the way you want it